The greatest variable in any sewing or quilting project is the fabric. Fabric type, texture, color, hue, and weight can completely change the look of the finished project. In this series, I'll concentrate on changing the fabric color and hue, but not by selecting a variety of fabrics. The variation will happen with just one selection. Ombre fabrics are the star of the series, fabrics that gradate from one color to the other. I'll show you how to create an ombre symphony. Here's a simple table topper that can quickly be created with just two ombre fabrics. The design appears as if we've chosen 12 or more shades of green or brown, but by selecting that gradated fabric, you'll streamline your fabric selection. Versatile ombre quilting, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala sewing cabinets, hand-built in the USA by American craftsmen, customized for you. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. I'd like to start this three-part series by introducing you to, as I mentioned, the star of the show, and that is the fabric. The fabric that ombre gradates from one color to the other, one hue to the other. It's a fascinating way of looking at designing with fabric. From the aqua gray color to a very vibrant blue, all within one crosswise cut. This fabric always reminds me of a sunset, from the deep purples to a beautiful sunset fabric. Not all ombres are just solid or have this model look. As you can see, this next one is a print. Well, an overprinted will be the wash from the purple to the tan. It's just a, an interesting, as I mentioned earlier, I said that word a number of times, but that's really what I think about this. When we look at the forest green to the chartreuse color and the brown color underneath, that, those are the two fabrics that we use to create the ombre symphony. It certainly doesn't appear as if only two fabrics were chosen, but you can see now by seeing the wash of color, the gradation of color, how this occurs. We're going to be sewing the green and the brown together, alternating the light and dark ends and doing a lot of subcutting, but you get an interesting play of color. It looks like a melody, musical melody going on in this, on this little topper. You could use it as a table top or a wall accent, make fabric for pillows. It's a great home decorating idea. So in working with ombre fabrics, like most quilting fabrics, you're going to cut them on the cross grain, meeting selvages to selvages. And underneath we have some more fabric that has been folded and ready for cutting. So I've just, I've already cut the edges so that they're nice and crisp of both the green and the brown. But the size of cutting these is going to vary because we're going to use the brown as the accent. So let me get this aligned on my cutting mat. As I mentioned, I already clean cut the edge. And for the main fabric, we're going to cut it in various widths from three inches to five inches. Now you can certainly vary that according to your needs, but you don't want them all the same size, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'll make one three inch cut and then several four inch cuts. In the book that accompanies today's program, you'll get all of the details. And, I, and there will be five four inch cuts. So you just cut a variety of these. And then for five inches, you're going to cut only two. But I'm just better straighten this up so I get them straight. And I'm just going to cut them right now in several widths, just to give you an idea. Now certainly you could make changes to the widths that you'd like to use. I'm just using a few of them right now. So the key though would be to have the accent color, just that one inch strip. If you get it too wide, you kind of lose the, the interesting color play of fabric. So now just seven one inch strips. And I'll just cut about three or four to show you what's going to happen. So again, traditional cross grain cutting, cutting seven strips. 
imagine cutting four more. Now after you've cut the strips, you're going to lay them out. And we'll lay a five inch, doesn't really matter. You have the choice of playing, laying the fabric in, in the sequence, the strips in the sequence that you'd like. But here's where you must follow the directions, and that is to put the dark end of the accent color next to the light end of the main color. And then put another dark end of the main color always to one side and the light colors always to the other. And you just lay these out to make an arrangement. And we'll just lay one more. I think you got the idea right now. So the dark always goes to one end and the light to the other, opposite, alternating the hues and the colors, the gradation. Now you meet right sides together and set your machine for a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Here I'm sewing with just that special fourth of an inch seam allowance used for patchwork using about a 2.0 to 2.5 stitch length, a relatively short stitch length, 15 to 18 stitches per inch, and seam away. Try to be accurate. Try to always just use that fourth of an inch seam if all possible. Then after you've sewn all 13 pieces together, here we have the pieces that have been sewn. And as I unfold this end, you can see plus we have a little bonus threads there, you can see how interesting that looks. Just a nice little gradation. Let's look at the seams. Notice that the seams have been pressed toward that narrow strip. That has worked well for us when we were creating this quilt pattern. Rather than trying to press them all in one direction, we were able just to press in toward the center. And it helps too when you're seaming the second time, seaming the subcuts together. So press, whoop, one more time, all in one direction. There we go. Then after doing the pressing of this piece, we'll do some more cutting. There's that old adage that quilters never die, they just go to pieces. Well, we just keep cutting the sections and subcutting them again. Now the widths in this next section vary from one inch to two and a half inches. And I'll give a clean cut to this end. And then I have found that when creating this, just cut one, one and a half, two, and two and a half inches and start over. You want a variety of cuts of all colorations. So now I did one, now I'll do one and a half, and I think you get the idea. You just move your ruler, cut accurately. Now we'll increase it to two inches. The next cut would be two and a half, and then start over. And as you cut across the width of this fabric, your, the gradations will begin to appear. Then you can lay it out again. And now you can start at the center, and we'll use this piece as the center. And then I have some that have been cut. And start placing the other widths right next to this one. Now I kind of like to place a narrow next to a wide and you keep placing these one next to the other and auditioning them. Now what you're going to notice is as I place these along and certainly that would not work well there, I'm just going to get my next piece of fabric, we've started to lay them down and restitch them together, but pay special attention to the ends. We're not making these even. We're making them so that the accent strips obviously are free forming through the middle of this quilt pattern. So we would just keep on going, laying these out. Stitch them together as you normally would with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Square your quilt top and add borders. In the next section, I'm going to talk a little bit about using gradated borders, but keep in mind that you don't have to use just one fabric. You could use a different coloration, and let me reach over and show you what we have here for another color combination. We have some beautiful water-looking colors from purple to blue and aqua, and anything in between. And underneath, this is how my sewing room is at home too. Lots of fabric piled up. We have made the purple the accent piece and subcut 
the strips and I'm just have set, cut a few of them and you can get the general idea if I would just sew these in the general way it's just a play of color and what a beautiful arrangement we could get by using a different fabric. So whether you're using natural colors or beautiful Caribbean colors you can make this ombre symphony with ease. If you count the number of fabric colors and hues used in this attractive home decor accent, you might reach the number of 24. By selecting coordinating ombres, the number of fabrics required for this project is scaled down to only four. It's a quick project that details the versatility and beauty of ombre fabrics. When it comes to the patchwork process, strips of fabric and straight stitching are all that are required to produce this gradation medley. Four fabrics that gradate from light to dark or gradate from one color to the next have been chosen and here's our selection. Now your selection may be totally different and depending upon the season of the year you might find different colorations available at your local fabric store. But just choose four that look well together through the gradation, the coloring changes. Half a yard is what you'll need for this small project. The nice thing about this quilt idea, this patchwork idea is that you could make a very large one or a very small project, just increase the yardage of course. You're going to cut each section into two inch strips, eight two inch strips per each color and you're going to stack them together and then just through configuration play around with how you'd like to arrange these. Now you're going to make four, uh, four stratas with eight strips of fabric in each and I'll show you what we worked with earlier, but you're going to use two colors per two colors per grouping. And so I have now two of these um, sunset fabrics that I call, and then we're going to put a green one, and then we'll alternate. And you certainly don't have to put these in any order. My order and your order will probably be completely different, and it doesn't matter. But you just want to arrange them until they look attractive. And we'll go this way, and now I'll add some blue. That blue little accent will help, perhaps like this. And, oh, let's put a dark blue in right in here between these two lighter shades. Okay, if you like the look of this, and it looks a little sloppy right now, but I have eight colors, you would seam these eight strips together with fourth of an inch seam allowances using the same technique that we used earlier, just stitch and stitch. It's kind of mindless sewing. Good, good for you clears the mind. That's what I think when I'm just sit, stitching strips together. Then remember you're going to make four of these different configurations, four of these subsets. And here we have four of them already stitched for you. And I'll lay them out a little bit. And you can see the colorations that we chose. I mean, they'll vary. And they look somewhat alike, but they're not exactly alike. I'll just keep peeling them back so that you can see the looks. So this is what you're going to work with, making four of these. And then after making four, we're going to cut these apart. You wouldn't want to leave just a long strip like this for the quilt. We're going to cut them into eight and a half inch squares, but cutting them on the point. Now here's a little idea for cutting them straight and making certain that they work for you. I've marked on my ruler eight and a half inches, and you could use that as your measurement. But what we found works best is to cut an eight and a half inch square from freezer paper and place this on the quilt strip and matching up the point at the seam. Now, speaking of points, to get them accurately measured so that you make certain that all of the seam allowances are pressed this time in one direction and double press from the front to make sure you don't have any little tucks or pleats at the seam line. So now I'll match these up point to point and because it's freezer paper and I just quickly do this on the mat, press it down. Then use your ruler, straight edge and a marking mar marker and you could cut at this point but Truthfully, I just like to mark them at this, at this juncture and mark the square. Then you can go back and cut them at a, a later date. The reason I like to just mark them first is to make sure that I have everything on point. 
Now, after marking one, you just lift this up. You can see the placement and leave a one inch space. This is important that you'll maximize the use of all your fabric if you leave a one inch space. Mark the tip to tip as we have here. Press this down again and do another marking. Now the reason for leaving a one inch space is that we have, after this is cut out, you'll have triangles. Well those triangles can be sewn together to create a square. Let me show you what I mean. I have some squares that have already been cut out. And be, when you're cutting those subsets and you lay them out, you'll lay them out in attractive arrangements. I don't want two purples together. I'll put a blue in this area and I'll put a light lavender in the middle. Oh, I kind of like that arrangement. But I'll have all of these extra half square triangles left over. Well, you simply meet the half square triangles and sew the long edges together. After they've been stitched, open them up and presto, you have another square. Apply that same eight and a half inch square to this area and cut it out so it's just perfectly square. Now if we take a look at our finished accent, you'll see that we have sashings, little accent strips between the various blocks. We cut one inch strips of the blue fabric this blue fabric was used for the sashing, the borders, and the binding. I needed one yard of fabric. You're following the instructions for most of the strips. You'll be cutting, for many of the strips, you'll be cutting eight and a half inch lengths and sewing them to the sides of the strip. And I just have a small sampling here. And then after you add it to the crosswise direction, then you can also add it to the lengthwise direction. This is just a small little quilt sample to show you the, the meaning of this. But I think you get the idea that you need to add some accents around the area then for the border. Here we used uh, three inch strips of fabric, cutting four. And if you look at the quilt, you'll notice that there are cornerstones, squares, three inch squares at each area. We cut two dark and two light cornerstones from the fabrics, strips, and then simply use the gradation fabric that we have here and stitch the gradation from light to dark and did the opposite on the other side of the quilt. To sew the top of the border, we added the cornerstones to each end, alternating so that you get the contrast of light and dark and then just stitch the strips. Again, this will all be detailed, but you can kind of see how the gradation works together. It's a wonderful medley of fabric and of color. And I hope you enjoy creating this when you're working with your gradation fabric. I'm always on the search for clever sewing and quilting techniques with the goal of improving my skills. This year I've set another goal, to live a heart healthier life. You might have the same aspirations. Since living a healthier lifestyle can't be fully discussed in a TV segment, we're going to follow the journey of a fellow sewer. You'll meet Peggy Need, who has made the commitment to live a heart healthy lifestyle. You'll be able to follow her progression, read her web diary, and perhaps start a healthy journey with the assistance of the American Heart Association's online tools. Please meet Peggy, an occupational therapist who often sews for her special needs son. As a single parent, she recently made the commitment to be our Heart to Heart with Nancy participant and let us track her progress. I have a very significant family history of heart disease and I have a son with muscular dystrophy and um, my other kids can't take care of him. I really need to be there for him, and in order to do that, I have to take care of myself. Good, thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. How have you been since the last time we saw you? Pretty good. Yeah? Any problems? Today, Peggy is having a follow-up meeting with KJ, her health care provider. They're meeting to review Peggy's numbers from her recent blood tests. So, we got your full cholesterol panel, so we're looking to see where we need to go with lifestyle changes and treatment. Your total cholesterol came back at 198 which is just under where we'd like it to be. Goal is less than 200. Your triglycerides are 244. And optimal for you is, and really for anybody, is going to be less than 150, okay? Um, Long ways to go yet. <laughs> well, 
But we can look at your diet and there might be some things that we can work on that will help with lowering your triglycerides and, and other activities too. Mm -hmm. Your HDL cholesterol, that's your good cholesterol or your happy cholesterol, that's at 38. And for women, we want that greater than 50, okay? So one thing that's really gonna help with that is going to be exercise. And then your LDL cholesterol is at 111. And for you, we'd like that less than 100. Um, and we're going for that based on some of the other tests that we've looked at for you that have helped us identify that we ne need to be aggressive with your therapies, okay? You. How has your diet been lately? Um, I've cut out ice cream. Good, Except good. Except for rare occasions. So okay. I'm doing better with that. Okay. Um, I don't think the rest really is all that bad. Okay. That's... Okay. There's other areas I'm sure I could have proven, but overall I think I do a pretty good choice, okay. except for the ice cream. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, and that is one culprit that's going to raise the triglycerides and any yeah. foods that are higher in the saturated fats or the sugars, refined carbohydrates, those are going to raise your triglycerides. So when you're looking at foods, think of your um, high fiber foods, um, whole wheat breads, whole grain, um, pastas, things like that, lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, and then for you, I wouldn't necessarily worry about weight loss, but looking at waist circumference measurements. Mm -hmm. And for you, your most recent waist circumference measurement was at 45 inches. And so n normal goal is 35 inches. However, I want you to be healthy. <laughs> with okay. exercise and proper eating and and really what we like to recommend is following a Mediterranean diet, avoiding the starchy vegetables, trying to get more of the raw vegetables like your carrots and your um, broccoli, cauliflowers, things like that. Fish, less red meats, um, and low fat dairy products as well. How are you doing with exercise? Well, I know you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> getting it in is really difficult, so I work better on a need basis. So we're looking to get another okay. dog. Okay. Our dog died this summer, oh. so um, uh, that's a need then. You have okay. to take them out twice right. a day at least. Right. That's great. So that'll help a lot. Okay. Well, if you remember when we met the last time when we talked about exercise, the goal is 150 minutes a week, which calculates to 30 minutes five times a week. So if you can do a 30-minute session, great. But if you have to do a 15-minute session in the morning before work, take your dog out, and then another 15-minute session in the evening, that's fine. Um, or getting a pedometer and setting a goal to reach 10,000 steps a day, then it's not necessarily a conscious effort of having to go out and exercise, but you can keep track of how active you're doing or being, I should say. That would, that would be good, too. I've tried those in the past. And it's pretty rewarding to see the, the steps chuck up. Okay. Well, the American Heart Association actually has a really great um, tool as well called Choose to Move. It's a 12-week program, and you can actually go in and, and log in, and it's a weekly um, email system that gives you tidbits on diet, exercise, and a lot of different tips to getting started with exercise. Do you think it's helpful for you to kind of follow along a plan and have something accountable to as well? Yeah, accountability really helps. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So okay. I'll see you back in about three to four months. Um, right. Work on the exercise yeah. and, you know, build into it if you have to a couple days a week and working up to that five days a week. Do you have any questions? No, no, okay. I'll just try. All right, give yeah. us a call if you have any questions and okay. I'll see you back. All right. It's good to see you again. Take care. Take care. Bye. You just met Peggy at the clinic, and now I'd like to introduce you to her in person. And Peggy, thanks for being our Sewing with Nancy Heart to Heart Challenger. It's admirable of you. Well, thank you for having me. It is an endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And we're going to be able to follow your progression by going to the www.sewingwithnancy.com, click on Heart to Heart with Nancy, and you can follow your progression, and our viewers, too, can choose a tool. So I'm going to try to live a heart healthier, and you are, too. Yes. Well, trying to get my weight at this point in my life um, better under control um, and choose the better meal options and sure. get more exercise. That's always difficult to fit in. And you're sore. 
yes. I sew for my son in particular. Uh, he has muscular dystrophy and uh, modifying his clothing has really uh, made life easier for myself and for his caregivers. Thanks. Well, you'll be able to meet Peggy two more times during the season as we progress along, and we'll learn more about your sewing and how to take care of yourself. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Versatile Ombre Quilting, which includes all the information from this three-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com backslash 2307. Order item number BK2307, Versatile Ombre Quilting, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Cabinets, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta.